There are two sides to every debate, and it's no different for the criminal justice system. Is it working or is it in need of reform? It's an argument that intimately affects defendants, plaintiffs, and civil servants. I was a federal prosecutor, and to break down this argument, earlier this evening, I spoke to Christine Soto DeBerry, the executive director of Prosecutors Alliance of California, and George H. Brockler, the district attorney for the 18th Judicial District in Colorado. Thank you both so much for joining us tonight. Christine, let's start sure. with you. What makes a prosecutor progressive? Break down this term for us. I think the key is law enforcement leaders and prosecutors in particular that are as dissatisfied with the status quo as most Americans are and are looking for a better way forward. We can do this work more humanely, more equitably, and still maintain public safety. Well, George, do you agree? What are your thoughts on progressive prosecutors? Prosecutors have always been about reform. I think the difference here is when you tag a prosecutor with a term like progressive and they adopt a certain uh, mantra, it begins to question the integrity of the system in a way that I don't think is justified when you get down to each of the individual cases that we handle. Some of these prosecutors are suggesting what many feel are fairly unconventional policies, like eliminating cash bail. George, do you feel this is within the realm of a prosecutor's job? It could be, uh, but I do think it's an abdication of their responsibilities under oath. To whole cloth say, we're just not going to arrest on these charges, or we're just not going to treat these like criminal violations worth prosecuting, that is not the role of the prosecutor. That's the role of the legislator. Well, Christine, do you feel like this is precisely the role of a prosecutor? Absolutely. That is the role. And I think it is exceptionally well-informed for prosecutors to think about what interventions will work best when somebody is struggling with mental illness or drug addiction. Well, George, we've seen lots of questions surrounding the handling of the Breonna Taylor case. From what's been publicly released, how would you describe the state's handling of that matter? I saw the same videos everyone else did, uh, and I'm troubled by it. But it is very difficult for a prosecutor to stand in the shoes of another. But I think the key here is whatever decision is going to be made has to be one that is made in full transparency to the public. Grand juries used for exceptional matters. The grand jury should not be used to give a prosecutor an out for, oh, well, I ran it by the grand jury, and I guess they decided not to do that. Christine, I want to get your take on uh, how the Breonna Taylor case has been handled. There's no doubt. It's a tragedy. Um, from the loss of her life all the way to a non-indictment. And I agree with George that we need to really limit when we use grand juries because of the secrecy around them. There is a value to that for prosecutors, but where we're now learning that they were not even presented with any type of a homicide charge. It is really distressing and difficult to imagine how there was not presentation of evidence in that vein. George, let me ask you this. So we know that black and brown Americans are incarcerated and arrested at higher rates than their white counterparts. Do you think that some part of this system is broken? No, not whole cloth. We're obligated to be vigilant about how these laws are applied to people across the board. Uh, I think that using statistics to say, look, the system's broken, look, there's systemic racism, isn't fair. I think what we need to do is drill down deeper and find out what are these individual cases about? How do we get people to stop breaking the law? That's the, that's the question. And DAs aren't equipped to answer that question all by themselves. That is a societal question. There's absolutely a disparity. We're responsible for equal protection as well as justice. And if we're going to turn a blind eye to the fact that enforcement of the laws is focused on certain communities, we will never gain the trust of those communities. We should do better. Well, I thank you both for joining me, my fellow prosecutor friends. I know that mm -hmm. this is very difficult work, um, and I know that, that you both are certainly doing the work and doing it well. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.